Welcome to Burning Over the Midnight Lamp, where we are dissecting music history, album by album, track by track. Today we are listening in on uh, Dollar Days, which is the sixth track on David Bowie's Black Star album from 2016. Please remember to like and subscribe if you want to hear other analyses from this album, other songs, and also in the future, songs and albums by other artists. If you'd like to hear the full analysis of this album and along with, uh, with the songs in this album, then please subscribe to our podcast. And on top of that, if you want to hear the full podcast, and in addition to that, listen along with us to all the songs from the album, then please support us on Patreon. Links and descriptions are below. My name is uh, Frode. My name is Tom. And my name is Chris. So now we have come to the sixth track on Black Star, Dollar Days, a song written by David Bowie. And unlike the other songs on Black Star, Dollar, Dollar Days uh, didn't have any demos recorded. It was made up in the studio. Bowie picked up the guitar one day and uh, yeah, just started playing this song, basically. Uh, the rest of the band learned the song on the spot and, and they recorded it. So it was recorded during the, the second period or second session of the Black Star uh, recordings on 6th of February 2015 at the Magic Shop Studios. Should we have a listen to the song? We sure do. Here we go. Dollar Days. Second. 
Yes, I uh, really, really like that song. I I completely agree, and I know I I was a bit harsh when it came to the seagull saxophone on "Tis a Pity She She Was a Whore," but in here I think the saxophone just is brilliant. It just really makes the song for me. Mm. It's a beautiful solo. It's a beautiful solo, but but uh, I must say also uh, the choruses here are, are really brilliant. You lift the whole song and and uh, ah, it's uh, mm. hair rising on my arms every time I hear that hear, hear the chorus. It's a, it's a slow beginning. And it's very beautiful opening with the instrumentation. Very mel lush, melancholic. Melancholic, and then you get the first verse, which is more in the same vein, and then the refrain, I'm dying to part comes, and it's like, you know, wave after wave hitting something. <laughs> it's, it's uh, I think it's quite brutal in contrast to the rest of the song. Um, so at, at least that's how I um, interpret it when I first heard it, and still... There's a contrast between the the verses and the refrain, which is, um, and and also in the end, I think it might not be so, but uh, I have the impression that his 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 voice is sort of not going, but it it sounds thinner in the end, more fragile, as maybe it's not as many. There is a lot of double tracking vocals on this album, but maybe they took away some so that he sounds more vulnerable and, and fragile mm -hmm. in the end because it's like this, you know, uh, old Bowie voice uh, that we heard on um, on the next day, uh, the first single, Where Are We Now? Uh, when it was like a shock, is this how Bowie sounds now? He sounds old. But then the rest of the album came and that, of course, was not the case that was a, a mannerism that he made for that song um, and well, i think uh, i hear s some of the same in this um, hmm. if it's intentional if it's um, if, if it's him really being um, old and sick or if it's something made to fit the lyrics yeah we will never know, just as the, the lyrics could be very personal and they could also not be personal. Um, the same you could say about how he, how he um, yeah, makes his voice in, in this song. It is at least widely believed that it is personal. That the song is about boy grappling with his impending death and certainly fits into the theme of the album of mortality, legacy, mm. and the end of life. Yeah, I, I, I get that. But I, I guess I also 
if there had been other songs from his later albums, not Black Star, and that hadn't been in here, we might also interpret it like that. I'm just thinking of Days, for instance, from mm. Reality, I think, mm. where he sings like, um, I have nothing much to offer. Uh, no, what am I saying? That's absolute beginners. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, that's not the one I'm thinking about. Um, no, but if we take the lyrics, I may be jumping ahead here, but I was looking for uh, something. Cash Girls, which is not something we have today, but that something that the shops had 100 years ago. So it, it's not it, Bowie's time period. <laughs> It, it could be a reference, he could be speaking about something um, he's read or uh, his the lyrics could take place in the past, but also there's so many things said here uh, that could be interpreted to be him saying, uh, speaking about himself at the end of his life. Uh, so, and, and I mean, it could be just that he's getting old so i mean even if he wasn't uh, dying here you know he was still at his later part of his life yes so. he was mm. yeah yeah the the part i wanted to reference in uh, days is uh, i gave nothing in return and there's little left of me and that also to me was kind of like okay he's getting older Mm. We don't know how much longer he has left, but then uh, that was uh, a long time before this came mm. out. And this trick of doing this vulnerable, vulnerable side, like the mm. way he sings, I guess it's also something he did before Where Are We Now, even. Yes, he's, he's been having his cake and eating it. Eating, no, I'm not. <laughs> Let's do that again. Uh, he's been doing that a lot, uh, making um, deliberate, we would assume, uh, ambiguous statements uh, when he did the al uh, the Hours uh, album. Um, I mean, he does sing here, I'm dying to push their backs against the grain and fool them all again and again. Yeah. Yes. It's very direct. <laughs> 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 that's, that's ambiguous. <laughs> but in the on the Hours uh, album cover, there was the... 1999 um, hours Bowie uh, cradling uh, the presumably dead uh, 1997 earthling Bowie um, so it, he is deliberately referencing himself but in the lyrics uh, they sound very personal and then he said somewhere that you know, he's, he was writing from the perspective of a man in his age but not himself so he could be doing that here as well, uh, both writing from the perspective of a, of a man in his age and situation and, and part of life, but also he could be writing <laughs> about uh, himself or the... There's a lot of ambiguity. Let, yes, many possibilities. And I think he, he wants to keep us guessing, he wants to fool us. Uh, and and, and the, of course, one thing that he repeats over and over here is... is yeah, I can say in the context of when it came out and, 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 and what we know now with Bowie being sick and dying is very ambiguous. Mm. Uh, you know, where he said, don't believe just for one second I'm forgetting you. I'm trying to, I'm dying to. Mm. Because I'm dying to is, is, you know, you want to do something very, very hard or, or um, you know, you're trying very hard, you're dying to do something, right? Mm. But it can also be interpreted as, oh, by the way, I'm dying too. I'm also dying. I'm yes. also dying. <laughs> yes. I, I don't think he would have meant it like that, but at least it's in the, in the context, an ambiguous uh, line. Another thing also here in the, in the text that, that um, certainly puts that in, in, in that direction as well is, uh, you mentioned it in, in both verses actually, if I'll never see the English evergreens I'm running to, it's nothing mm. to me, it's nothing to see. And of course, uh, he, he, him being, in, uh, being from England and, and uh, living in uh, America for uh, the last uh, 
30 years or so. Mm. Mm. And him being sick, I wonder if he... Was he longing to, to go back to England and, and hoping to see the evergreens of England again and uh, knew that he wouldn't have the chance to do that at this stage? I don't know. Mm, but, it, it, but if that is the case, it is a, actually a very heartbreaking line. But it's also an ambiguous line because it, it it's means nothing to me. Mm. There's nothing to see. Yeah. Is that? I so don't care about that. <laughs> yes, it's like, you know, he's... Yeah. It's mm -hmm. conveying some sadness, but also some, um, you know, I, I don't care mm. attitude. And I don't know. I, I take that as more like a self comfort. I don't, I don't quite believe that's what he meant. But no. what we do know is that w one of Bowie's last statements, maybe the last, one of the last at least, public statements was when he got. Um, I think it was a Brit Award for the next day, and it was accepted by uh, Kate Moss in uh, one of the Siggy costumes. And this was uh, at the time of the Scottish uh, independence referendum in 2014. And she delivered a message from Bowie that was, uh, Scotland, please stay with us. Mm. With us. Meaning he, <laughs> he still felt like an Englishman, mm. even though he lived in... New York for yeah, 30 years or so, and also before that, Switzerland and Berlin and LA and all over the place. Mm. So there's, um, yeah, there's still some England in there somewhere. Right. Any final thoughts of the song? Well, we take one song at a time, but these two last songs, they actually connect in a very beautiful way. Mm. <laughs> I think the bridge where uh, Dollar Days uh, turns into, um, I can't give everything away, uh, it is one of the perfect little moments of the album. Actually, yeah. I can't give everything away. It starts at the very beginning of, of uh, at mm. least the way it is. The, the, the tracks are split up. Yes. Mm. Mm. So, um, but, but that being said, be uh, I've always felt that Dollar Days would have been more suitable as the last track. And I can't give it everything away. I mean, they're, they're both great songs. They both sort of have that melancholic feeling and, and are both, in a way, uh, farewell songs, you could say, mm. but uh, or can be interpreted as that. Uh, but but I do feel that Dollar Days would have been an even better ending to the album, actually. That's an interesting thought. We mm. should uh, re-sequence it and see what we think. <laughs> mm. Maybe they tried it and it uh, didn't fit, for all I know. Who knows? Yeah, that's possible. Mm. Uh, I, personally, I think the lyrics of I Can't Give Everything Away is a better ending. But um, it, it's also... I agree that it would be a, a good ending, but just as we said when we d were discussing the Lazarus track, that if the Lazarus track would have been the last, that would have been very sad. <laughs> and also with Dollar Days, mm. that I can't give everything away, ends on a um, little bit more optimistic note. Well, uh, so does Dollar Days, at least musically. It is very uplifting, that last... Very powerful with the saxophone, mm. that melody that that plays. Mm. It's like a theme there. It, it is uh, like a triumphant ending to the song, which mm. also would have been a very triumphant ending to to the album. But uh, I agree, it's sentimental, but it's not sad. No, uh, I mean, it's kind of, it's not sad like Lazarus is sad, but it has a me melancholy, which uh, of course can be sad in the context of the, of the album and all mm. but uh, it's, it, it it doesn't end sad at least it ends like yeah as i said in, in a triumphant way and, and uh, positive uh, positive vibes there at the end yeah and with that i think we'll end it there yes um, thank you to everyone for uh, watching us and uh, join us soon for the last track of the album and then it's only for us to say goodbye. Goodbye. See you on the other side.